Hey guys, Brittany here, and I am so excited to have you all get to know High Point Rockers pitcher, Bryce Hensley. Not only is he a professional athlete, but he is also a country music artist. So you're gonna get to know all the details. So big shout out to the High Point Rockers fans and my Boss Babes fanatics. We're gonna get into the fun stuff first before we actually get to know you as an athlete and a musician. Favorite mixed drink? If you're at a bar, what is your go-to? Lately, I've been really stuck on uh, tequila soda with a splash of sour mix in it. It's like a taste of summer. I don't know. Somebody got me on that at the bar a while back, and that's what I've been sticking with ever since. So it almost kind of sounds like a smaller version of a margarita. A little bit, yeah, wait, with a little bit of fizz in there. So <laughs> I like sodas, so it adds a little bit of fizz at times. What about your favorite beer? Are you a beer person or no? Absolutely. A big Coors Light guy, but I miss the Bush Apple. That's a, that's a big one. Bush just came out with peach, too. So I like, the, I like the classic, you know, watered down beers, but at the same time, a little flavor in there never hurt anybody. I had to ask these questions because with me being 18 weeks pregnant right now, I will admit, I do miss my margaritas, my mimosas, the drinks on the occasion, especially with it being warm out. Absolutely. So Bryce, lately what I've been doing is when I go out to eat with Ryan or my friends, I'm getting mocktails, but it's not oh, the same. It's not the same, but I, it, it's, it's okay. You gotta trick your brain into it, so you know, it's close enough. <laughs> it's close enough. And as a kid, what was your favorite theme park and did you have a go-to ride? I heard through the grapevine you're not a roller coaster person though. I don't like heights. Uh, I think being really tall, I was really scared of heights. But my dad used to work in Orlando and he would take us to Disney World all the time when I was a little kid. But I liked the teacups because I could spin it really fast and watch dad get sick. So I was <laughs> a big fan of those. Nice. And I really wanted to ask you this question because Ben Eklinski gave me an interesting answer okay. to it. <laughs> what would be your dream car and why? I want a restored old school Bronco. Uh, I think the Bronco is one of the best looks ever. And I don't know, I think watching Longmire, it really turned me back on to the Broncos again. <laughs> uh, but I think the the old school remodeled Broncos would be, if I could get one of those, I think I'd be content driving for the rest of my life. Like the big Broncos? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> With like, the big uh, tires. Exactly, big tires, big Bronco, fresh paint job, good to go. Favorite thing about the state of North Carolina, I know you are actually from here, so we'll talk about that shortly. But aside from growing up here, what do you love about this state? I think it's the most diverse state in the fact of I mean, right here, we're three hours away from the beach and we're three hours away from the mountains. So whatever mood you're in, you can go, I mean, you can spend a day and go to the beach and go to the mountains. So you get a little bit of everything. You don't really have to pick and choose what you want. Top bars and restaurants. So if you're gonna come out here and visit the state of North Carolina, or if you're gonna go out to dinner with your girlfriend, with your parents, if you have friends coming in to visit, where are you gonna be going to visit? I mean, I'm gonna shamelessly plug the, the sponsors of the High Point Rockers. <laughs> Ricksters! Go for dinner at Ricksters and drinks at Blue Bourbon Jacks. You know, the top two of the Rockers, so you gotta go with those two. But there's, you know, Blue Rock, there's a lot of really good spots to eat and go grab drinks around here. I think it's a really good spot to do it, but I got a shameless hit plug and put Ricksters and, and Craig and Brian and BBJs on there. Love to hear it. We're big fans of Ricksters as well. Sweet Old Bills is Sweet another Bills. one. You guys do come out here and visit the state of North Carolina. For sure, you got to go visit those spots because you can have a variety of foods, drinks, and Sweet Old Bills has some really good brisket and burgers. Absolutely. You go to BBJs, you'll see me there. <laughs> So you're from the state of North Carolina. What part? I know you're closer to like the Asheville, mountainy area. Let's discuss that. So I grew up in, you gotta say Asheville because nobody knows where Swannanoa is, but I grew up in Swannanoa, North Carolina, which is about five, 10 minutes outside of the downtown Asheville. What do you remember most about your early years? I just remember being outside all the time. We grew up on, you know, a couple thousand acres that my grandparents had, and it's, I think they tried to make it act like it was fun to be outside mowing grass and stuff, so we'd do it so they didn't have to, but I just remember me and my brother always, you know, we're outside, we had, you know, there were animals all over the place, and my grandparents had a lot of dogs, and uh, we always did stuff outside. We had creeks out there, and they owned a bunch of mountains, and we were just always out there exploring and stuff. Funny childhood memory. You have a good personality, so I figured you could share something Interesting oh, that might have happened when you were younger. I remember going, me, uh, me, my brother, and my grandpa went hunting one time, and we had, you know, some of the hunting dogs out with us. And I thought one of them lost their collars, and I was like ten, and I reached down to pick it up, and I said, you know, did one drop their collar? And my brother yelled at me, and I didn't realize I just picked up a copperhead. Oh didn't my even gosh! It until afterwards, but was it alive? Yeah. Scary. Yeah. And I guess that's where my fear of snakes started. Didn't even know it. <laughs> so that's a funny, interesting story and memory. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks for bringing that one back up. I'm going to struggle sleeping tonight, but I appreciate it. 
I haven't heard that one from you before, so I'm glad I asked. Is there a time in your life that you wish you could redo if there's anything that you wish you could relive, whether that be something not so good or maybe something great and you're like, dang, I wish I could go back and relive the Little League World Series if you were there or oh, God, no, something. We weren't, we weren't nearly that good. Um, <laughs> cool. High school baseball was great times. College baseball was some of the best times of my life. And being in this area, and it's part of the reason I stick around here because I fell in love with this place. But honestly, and it sounds cliche, but cliche is cliche is for a reason. You get to come out here with these guys every day and get to come out here in the city of High Point. And I love this place, honestly. it's Every day is a new adventure, and that's kind of what I enjoy about it as I show up, and I'm, I'm happy to be at the field every day here. It is a really good spot, and I feel like I plug the High Point Rockers a lot, both on my podcast and social media, because honestly, it's just a fun environment. The ballpark is practically brand new. I mean, it was built in like 2019. They keep up the grounds very well. We're actually sitting in a place right now called Blessings Park, so if you have young kids, you can come here, have a picnic. And there's actually a splash pad directly back that way. We have a playground. Like, honestly, I can go on and on and on. So thank you for bringing up the ballpark itself. Absolutely. But back to you. And we're going to be talking about baseball soon, but country music. So North Carolina is really well known, just like Nashville is, for country music. How did you get into singing and playing guitar? Both my granddads did it, and I always wanted to. But I don't really think I had the brain to learn how to do it. I took one guitar lesson and it was baseball season. I said, uh huh. So I went on YouTube, like every kid now does, and taught myself how to play. And then uh, during COVID, I hated work construction and I figured I'd try something else. And then it turned out I knew how to sing too. So we kind of lucked into most of this, but it's been a whole lot of fun. So you got to go with what you got, you know? Favorite cover song that you enjoy singing? Strawberry Wine. Uh, nobody ever expects it. Every time I bring a band out to play it, they're like, man, I forgot how good of a song this is. But, you know, uh, the last concert I did, Michael Russell was out there and he walked up and told me, he said, man, you, you didn't know that was one of my favorite songs, did you? He was like, I, you know, everybody gets so excited to hear it. <laughs> and uh, I, it's one of my favorite. I love 90s country and, you know, old school country and throwing it back to that, I think it's always a fun one. So I want to discuss your brand new album. You had an album release party back in March. Both Ryan and I attended it. And that funny story is two days after we were up there is when I actually took the positive pregnancy test. So that was the last time I got to have drinks and have some fun. But anyways, let's discuss that album release party. Let's talk about the album, name drop the album so people can go put up on Spotify and such. It's called Redneck Reasons. Funny story too, when, when you came out and you know, we found out you were pregnant, we were thinking back and you told me how long <laughs> and I was like, wait, that's about exactly when I put my album out. That's why I saw you then. I was like, Man, that's wild timing. So we figured out the math of that too. We were like, oh man, a lot of fun. You know, I always wanted to put a lot of songs together and, and get a chance to do it. And it's been really cool having the support of everybody, uh, you know, listening to it and everybody appreciating it. So it's been really cool. But it's on Spotify, on Apple Music. Go check it out if you get a chance. What are your top two songs off of that album? And what are the reasons for writing those top two songs? My Old Man is probably number one. You know, my dad's been such a big part of my life. I, I thought it'd be really cool to include him in on, or in on that. And it was the last song on the album. And when we recorded it at the very end of it, it just, you know, I'd say, love you, Bob's. It was kind of a compilation of all the stuff that I learned from my dad over the years. And I thought it was one of the really cool ideas to, you know, not just salute my dad, but salute everyone's dad, whether, you know, they're alive and living or whether, you know, you're, you're still hanging on to members of them. Uh, that was one of the really cool parts of it. Number two, on this clock. I wanted to write something a little different. I've been listening to a lot of Zach Bryan. And I wanted to write something that was a little bit different than I'd sang before. And it's kind of just a, a song about watching life fly by and you realize how quick it moves. The sound of it's a little different. I think it tells a really good story of like, uh, life moves fast, so you gotta enjoy it while you can. Love the sound of both of those songs and the motto and reasoning behind them. Yeah. So go ahead and check out Bryce's album. We will have him name drop it again towards the end of this interview, as well as his website. And where do you hope country music takes you? Again, you are both a professional athlete and an artist, so how is it hard, or is it hard, juggling the both of those? As Ryan, I'm sure, will be glad to tell you, uh, I'm not the world's best at time management, uh, and I like to sleep in a little bit too much, so the time management part of it gets a little tough, uh, but outside of that, you know, everyone here is really understanding and really supportive, and, you know, they really push me to go out and play shows when I can, and anytime I get an opportunity to do something like that, they're really supportive, but, you know, trying to, I've got great agents and great people that, are, that help me manage it, but, uh, just the time part of it, if I could stop sleeping in so much, we'd probably be a lot, a lot better off. Any advice to a young musician or a young athlete that might be tuning in right now? Absolutely. Just stay true to yourself and go for it. That was always the part that scared me was, you know, I never thought that, that sports and 
music really mixed, so I was always scared people were going to judge me for singing. And it, it turns out the people that support me most are, you know, teammates that I've played with along the way and guys that I play with, and they get so excited. And I think I probably have been better off if I'd have just gone for it from the get-go. You know what I mean? You, you never know until you take the jump. So. Just stay true to yourself, be yourself at all times, and people always appreciate that. We're gonna switch gears and talk about baseball because again, you have both elements to your career. Early years, where did you start off? Were you a t-ball person, a little league person? Where the heck did baseball come about? So my older brother's 90 years older than me, so as, as soon as I could start playing baseball, I mean, I think even before I was, as soon as I could walk, I was trying to be on a baseball field, so. Uh, I mean, I can't even remember back far enough to a time that I didn't play baseball. So as soon as they put a baseball in my hand, we just ran from there and kept on going. And why pitching? Did you play other positions when you were younger as well? I did, so I, I was a catcher in Little League and was so disappointed when I found out you weren't allowed to be a left-handed catcher. And I still think that's the worst rule of all time. But in middle school, I was a shortstop because for some reason our middle school coach saw a chubby, really tall kid that was left-handed said he should play shortstop. Uh, it never made sense to me either. And then they put me at first base finally, and I always wanted to play first base and hit, but I got to you know high school and they figured out I wasn't really that athletic. I could just throw a ball pretty well. So uh, when I got to junior college, I got one at bat, and then they said, all right, so you're going to be a pitcher from here on out. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've been trying with Jamie Keefe. I've gotten one at bat in three years here, and I didn't strike out is what I'm very excited about. I, I'm pretty fired up about that. I did put the ball in play. So funny story. So I remember it was in Gastonia. I was standing right near their dugout. Bryce is warming up and I look at him and I give him the face like, Bryce, what the, what are you doing? And he just looks at me like, I don't know. And he actually did put the ball in play, I will say that. Was, so I'm, I'm proud of you, Bryce. I was fired up, I'll tell you, for three years, the only thing I've wanted <laughs> is to get in a bat here and I would be happy and that's what I finally got. So I, <laughs> I'd say the career is pretty content at this point. Are there any pitchers that you currently look up to, whether that be at the collegiate level, professionally, maybe like to emulate some of the players here? I mean, shout out to the guy behind the camera. He's, you know, <laughs> your husband's my throwing partner. We finally got him out of his shell a little bit because he's got a lot of knowledge and nobody knew it because he didn't ever talk the first year and a half he was here, but actually a very funny guy. He's, he's a really good catch partner and a guy that's obviously really fun to watch. If you've been to Rockers game and you've seen one where we win by a run or two and he comes in there in the ninth, it's always a fun guy to watch. But uh, what's really cool about playing here is you've got so many guys, you know, we just brought in Cambridge Ocean and, you know, we've got Greer and Bear Claw and so many guys with major league experience that, mm -hmm. you know, you get to go in there and talk to and pick their brands. And I think that's one of the big things is the day that you stop learning is the day you should probably stop playing baseball. So it's really cool to get to learn from all these guys. Speaking of major league or big league experience, I know that you spent some time in the Kansas City Rules organization. I'm not sure what level you actually went to. So we're going to have you kind of discuss that. What was it like playing within the Kansas City Royals organization? It was a whirlwind. It happened really fast on draft day. And my dad and I were sitting there having a beer watching the draft. And I got a call from the Phillies and they said, hey, we're going to pick you up with four picks. And I looked down at my phone. I looked back up and I was like, Dad, that's my name. The Phillies? And I said, no, the Royals. And we kind of just sat there for 20 minutes and nothing happened. And then I got a phone call and uh, they said, hey, you ship out tomorrow at noon. You know, we had a party plan and everything. I had to cancel that. And they said, by the way, you got to shave. And I found out very quickly I did not look very good without a beard. I looked like a chubby 15 year old when I was shaving. So oh that, was, uh, that was a rough two years of baseball cards. But, you know, it was fun. Made a lot of buddies. Got a lot of experience. Uh, got to play in a lot of different places. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Got to win two rings. So that was always, that's always a cool part. But it was a good time. And, you know, glad to be here now. Any other memories that you could share? I know you just dropped a bunch of memories, but anything specific from a road trip that you were on or maybe a, a coach that taught you something while you were within that organization? I mean, you know, we had the, the one cool thing about Kansas City Royals is all the guys that, you know, played with the Royals throughout, they try to find a way to, you know, be able to bring them back in. So we would go and just bring training Bo Jackson would come talk to us. Or, you know, we would have all these legends that would come out there. So I just thought it was really cool, these guys that I grew up, you know, kind of idolizing and that, it seemed bigger than life. We'd just be out on the field hanging out with you. you know, Reggie Sanders ended up being one of my good buddies. And guys like that would come around, and you always think that they're bigger than life, and you realize that there's another coach, and I, I always thought that was really cool. And to circle it all back, here we are with the High Point Rockers. What do you enjoy most about this team? I know you and I both already spoke about some of the cool things regarding playing and or working here, but what have you enjoyed most being here so far for the last couple seasons? It's really fun to show up here every day, and you know, everyone has a good time when they come to the ballpark. Uh, one of my favorite parts personally is, you know, our fan base and, and how diehard they are. And it, 
you know, I showed up here and they took me in like I've been here my whole entire life, and that's that's the way it's been ever since I started playing here. And you know, when I go to the grocery store, and, you know, living here in the offices, and I'll see people, and they in January they'll tell me how excited they are for baseball season to start. Hey, who do you think's coming back? What? So how diehard our fans are, you know, whether we win or lose, they're always here, and, and you know, they they treat us like a part of the community instead of just you know the, the baseball players we are. So it's it's really cool to come out here and have those kind of fans. And what's that feeling like every time you take the mound? It could either be a high pressure situation, or usually it's always a high pressure situation, right? You have the fans cheering, you might be up a couple runs, down a couple runs, and you're like, okay, I need to get focused and get in there. So what is it like getting on that mound? You know, it's a lot of fun. You know, playing in the minor leagues and everything, I, I enjoyed it a lot, but I think it's a lot more fun when you have a little skin in the game and, you know, when you're, you know, I wasn't born here, but this is, this is what I consider my home now, and when you're kind of representing your home across your chest. I think it's a lot more fun and I think it's a little more exhilarating that you're playing for something at the end of the day more than just a game because these games really do mean a lot to the people in the stands and you know I, I always joke around but you know when I walk out of the mound they say my name and I hear people you know yell I always think it's a really cool feeling like you know you feel like it's not just the guys on the field that have your back but it's the people that are in the stands too and I think that's something that's really special about this place. Beautiful answer and as we start to wrap up the baseball and High Point Rockers talk. Having Frank Viola as a pitching coach, if you guys don't know who Frank Viola is, please go ahead, look him up. He is a legend in, in the pitching world. I think he has a couple Cy Young Awards, a World Series if I'm correct. But yeah, he's awesome to be around, very personable, very friendly, a great coach. I mean, obviously he doesn't coach me, but <laughs> I enjoy speaking with him. So Bryce, what is it like having Frank Viola as a pitching coach. It's kind of one of those things, like I said, where you see these guys and they seem bigger than life. And, you know, I always tell people when they ask what Frank's like, you know, I, I tell them, if you didn't know Frank was famous, he wouldn't either. I'm telling you what, he's <laughs> one of the one of the really special things about our coaching staff here is, you know, they obviously care about our careers, but uh, they always prioritize the people that we are in our lives outside of the field. And they understand that, you know, when baseball ends, we have a life and they really prioritize us as people. Uh, you know, Frank, Frank's really fun because you get to mess around with him. I did an interview uh, on ESPN, and they asked me that same question, and I knew I'd get under Frank's skin, so I told him it was really cool to have a pitching coach that played with Babe Ruth, and, you know, and he looked at me and he said, don't talk to me for the rest of the week. How old do you think I am? I know, he's so, like, I'm not that old. So what are you, 120, 130 by now? So we, we get to mess around with him every day, and he's he takes it really well, and he dishes it back out, so it's... It's really fun. We call him Uncle Frank because he's like, you know, he's our pitching coach, but he's like the fun uncle that you get to come see every day. <laughs> Shout out to Frank Viola. Shout out Uncle Frank. <laughs> Any personal goals for you this season of 2023? I don't know if you consider this one personal, but I, I want to win a championship. Uh, you know, that's back to how special this city is. We came really close last year and living here in the off season, I would have people come up and tell me how much it meant that, you know, we went out there and, and represented the city well. And, you know, this city took us in and loves it. I want to win a championship and bring a, bring a championship to the city. And as we start to wrap up this really fun interview, I've enjoyed having you yes, sit here next you. to me so far. I enjoy asking a couple little quick, intimate questions because again, I feel like a lot of people don't get to know the professional athlete off the <laughs> field. So whether it be your favorite restaurants, a bar, when your family comes into town, your love life, and we'll keep it brief. Shout out to your girlfriend. We don't have to name drop if you don't want no, to, but right. okay, Rebecca, she's awesome. <laughs> she's always at the field. Speaking of her always being at the field and supporting you at your shows, what is that feeling like having that strong backbone? Because being an artist, being an athlete, being somebody that travels all the time, it's nice to have somebody that's constantly there for you picking up the phone, rubbing your back when you need it, maybe making you dinner, showing up at the field, clapping and giving you a kiss. What is that feeling like? You know, it's it's really funny. She knows, or now obviously, but coming into it, she knew zero about baseball. I mean, I'm telling you literally nothing. So it's, you know, we would get home from games and we still do this and she'll sit there and have this look on her face and I'm like, what is it? And she'll ask me a baseball question and some of them gotten pretty good and she's, she's learning a lot and I'm proud of her for it. It's almost like uh, she doesn't know what's going on. She just shows up at sports. And I think that's huge, and you know, I, I give her hell all the time, but she, she does a great job of being there. And like I was talking about, my time management is awful, and she's an event planner, so she is very strict about everything she plans. So when we have shows, she's always on me about like, hey, you need to get this done, you need to get this done. And I like to fake it till I make it, and she's like, no, Bryce, like, you need to actually have a plan here. So she's, she's really good about that, and you know, calling me and making sure I'm notorious for being late. Uh, as Ryan will tell you, we've done a good job about it this year. Early buses, I'm always scared, so she'll call me three or four times to make sure I wake up to make it onto the bus on time. And uh, you know, it's really cool to have somebody to support you out here. That's, 
you know, we've got a lot of fans in the stands, but to have somebody that's got your back like that, it's it's really cool. How did you guys meet? Are you cool with sharing how you guys oh, met? Lord. Shout out to BBJs again. Uh, <laughs> you know, this place just got a, but uh, that's, we met at BBJs and we're around ever since. So, the place has got a special place in my heart, I guess. Amazing. Well, again, like I said, I just wanted to keep that very short and to the point. Shout out to Rebecca. I enjoy speaking with her and her friends when they come to the game. So, Bryce, as we wrap up, shout out your album one last time and your website. That way people can go ahead and check you out and follow you. Absolutely. It's called Redneck Reasons. You can find it on Apple Music, Spotify, anywhere you can listen to music. And you can find more out at BryceHensley.com. Awesome. Thank you, Bryce. We Thank will have you. you back on here again soon. Thank you so much.